Hello folks, I'm just going to do a video. I've done part of a similar one before, but I'm going to add to it a bit because I keep being asked the same question. What's the GZ screw for in the back of a motor plane? So I'll start again, <laughs> try and explain. Um, the original English motor plane had a round top dial in, in them, like that. And the round top dial in itself is a bit hit and miss to set right and there was no means of withdrawing the iron back a bit when it was in place. At a later date they did away with the round top and did it like that. <coughs> Don't know the reason for this because it's no advantage in adjusting the iron. But later still, they put a nib on, which enabled you now to adjust the iron backwards and forwards. And what I've done, I've gone one step further to make it easier for me. I do a lot of nib dines, or I've done in the past, but uh, do away with a nib dine and just put two uh, half moon shapes in there it saves me a lot of time instead of making nib dimes I can adjust it like that and that complete, completely does away with the GZ screw um, don't really know how they got to the stage of the GZ screw I can only assume but originally, the motor planes had no means of adjusting the iron backwards and forwards. And I've noticed on some of the very early motor planes, the rear infill was loose. But every time you took the iron out and the wedge to shot the iron and put it back, it forced the loose uh, bed back in its right place so there's no real necessity to have a, any form of fixing in it but at a later date still they started to put a screw there towards the front end fill and a cheese head there in this instance this is Holt's oven uh, towards the rear end fill in. And then again, over a period of time, and I don't know really which came first, but they used to put a screw in the sides of the plane to hold the bed in, and a screw in the front in the field to hold that in. Sometimes they'd have two screws, sometimes one. And again, a bit later on, they did away with the screws and put rivets in to hold the infills in. So you get two rivets or one rivet, two rivets or one rivet. Did away with it, anything there whatsoever. And it is such a plane. This plane is by book. And for some reason, it's got a counter head screw let into the back to hold the rear infill in but filed off so it was nothing to do with adjusting the iron this particular plane has still kept that uh, screw but also it's got a rivet there a rivet there and a rivet there holding the infill in place and the lever cup and screw but they retained that screw that's a one-off you, you don't always get that when you've got rivets in um, this this 
very early plane, how old it is, I've got no idea, could even predate the dovetail type. Uh, it's bronze, and it would have had a round iron in it originally, which worn out when I got it, um, and it's been bashed numerous times. That's to adjust a round top dime backwards and forwards. And eventually, of course, it damages the plane. And if it's a casting, a steel casting, this is bronze, all that hammering there would have cracked and dis destroyed the back. Anything else I can explain? Incidentally, these are the only three old mitre planes I have. And I've sold this one to a mate of mine. It's a magnificent plane. In order, I sold it, he wanted it, and I wanted some cash to buy another purchase. Otherwise I would never have sold it because it's irreplaceable, fine mouth and everything. So I'll just go through quick stages. Originally, the mitre plane didn't have anything there to hold the infilling. Nor did it have anything in the back sides. But they soon developed a screw there to hold the front end fill. Then they went on to screws and rivets uh, and nothing there whatsoever. So a lot of people think this uh, cheese head screw was for adjusting and probably that's how it developed but it's no longer necessary and I never advise it in planes with a hammer eventually you'll do damage uh, they also developed of course the the uh, scroll wedge which appears in a lot of bench planes one ones and that in my opinion is ease of knocking the iron out to be resharpened. If you haven't got a scroll wedge, carpenters used to either bash it there or bash it there to adjust the iron backwards and forwards or get it out. And I think that carried through onto the idea that you could do this in a miter plane. So originally there was no screw there for adjusting the irons. Then they developed that iron after the round top one, which no improvement, I don't know how they came to that. But of course there was a big improvement when they put the nib on. That again eliminated any hammering on the back or elsewhere to adjust the iron. And I went on to do that, making it easier for me. So there's no necessity to have anything there in the back of the mind plane. And it certainly wasn't there originally. I must admit, however, because everybody's got used to seeing them in the back, um, I sometimes put them in but it's not necessary, just looks right, but sometimes I completely leave them out because I don't want people to start eating them again. <laughs>